Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Diatone GTR 249THD. Featuring Diatone Mamba 1105, 5500 KV motors, 2.3 inch Emax props, F405 flight controller, 25 amp 4 in 1 ESC, power switchable TBS VTX, for your FPV and HD recording is the Caddx Turtle V2. It doesn't come with a receiver but I mounted mine right here. Motor post to motor post I am getting about 115 millimeters. Bottom carbon fiber plate looks to be at least 3 millimeters thick. The canopy is noted as electroplating canopy. It weighs just over 99 grams. I flew it on the recommended battery. It's a 3S 650 milliamp GNB, which brings the all-up weight to just under 160 grams. Comes with an extra battery strap, five battery pads. I double stacked them. Zip ties, cadre of extra screws, a buzzer, mail in of the XT30, two extra nylon nuts, two extra wiring harnesses for your receiver, a breakout for your flight controller stack, extra ESC and buzzer wiring harness, and of course, stickers. So Diatone reached out and they made sure I had the quad. And then they also asked me to double check which version of Betaflight, Betaflight came on it. And I did find that it came with 4.0.6. And they were wanted to make sure that I had the proper CLI. So I get a feeling that they really wanted this flown on 4.0.6. So this should be how it comes from the factory. And one of the things that you'll notice is every once in a while we get a shutter. Uh, you might refer to that as an oscillation. Uh, you might look at that as a D-term oscillation. I did tinker with the PID tune. And I didn't find I could make it any better, so I went back to the factory default PID tune. And with this machine, I think the reason why you'd want this is you're wanting to get HD footage and you don't want props in view. Now that's a personal preference, so that's something that you'll have to decide whether props in view or not is something that you highly desire or not. But I had to train myself a little bit to fly this to minimize the oscillations or the prop wash that you get in this and and because my flight style doesn't adhere itself very well to more smooth cinematic sort of flight style you know i like to go fast and stay close to stuff and zip around I, so i make a lot of sudden movements on the sticks uh, especially my throttle i have a bad habit of kind of jumping in turns to where i'll gain altitude and as i get to the turn i'll let off and then i'll get back on the throttle as i come into the turn more deeply and i really had to stop doing that you'll notice it's still a little bit i haven't completely trained myself out of that but that was one of the things i noticed when i was flying is that you need to be much smoother especially on the throttle because that can bring out some of those vibrations which you obviously don't want when you have this sort of quad you're wanting to get good footage you don't want to see any vibrations in your footage so you'll need to be real steady of course my space doesn't necessarily suit this quad either you would probably if you're doing more filming or scenic sort of flying that you'll want to have a larger space i didn't hit that flip or that roll very well so i'm going to try it again here ah, that's a little better and you saw a little tiny bounce back there i think an indie filter can also help a great deal uh, it doesn't come with an indie filter unfortunately but you can get those i think they're around eight dollars and they have two different ones one for sunny days and one for cloudy days. So if you're really wanting crisp footage, I would encourage you to find those ND filters, and I can locate those. Uh, most shops, I think, carry them anymore because the Caddx Turtle V2 has been around for a while. I think the Tarsier comes with the ND filters, uh, at least one ND filter. So uh, in this particular case, we have to spend a little bit more money if we want to get that finest grain of footage. And you may also notice uh, in the corners I get some of those lines. That has been a long-term issue with the Caddx Turtle. Don't worry too much. It's fixable. You don't have to uh, resolder anything or send it back or anything. It's just a firmware reflashing. Beta FPV has a support page on it. Happy Model has a support page on it. I think Ditone does as well, but I wasn't able to find it. And as we wrap up the flight, we're going to see about a three-minute flight on this. Of course, we didn't see the OSD in this flight, so you have to either take my word for it or you have to double-check the timeline on that. So a couple things to note that I think most people will ask right away. One is the canopy. I did have several crashes, especially in my first few flights when I was really trying hard to figure out how I could aggressively fly this thing. I flew it about as aggressively as I could in my space in the flight footage you saw and while keeping a pretty good footage. You know, I didn't do an outstanding job, but I wanted to give you some idea. Of course, you could always fly slower and more smooth and you'll get even crispier footage but i wanted to give it the other end of the spectrum to see how fast you could go and that punch out over the house that you saw you know these diatone mamba 5500 1105 motors they're pretty special motors you know it would be real easy when i've got these builds on the table to just run these motors every time and i've been searching for other motors that have the efficiency and the performance and i'm just not finding them so even if you're not interested in this quad if you're doing a build and you haven't experienced those 1105 5500 kv motors i highly recommend it they're inexpensive 
And so far, from all the motors I've tried, and I've only released like one video on a motor, and it was the uh, the Zing motors, I think, uh, that were the, the blue and the polka dot uh, on them. So I've done some other testing with motors in the back end. I just didn't make videos on it, and that's, that's my own fault because I was just rushing through those things, trying to find something else that we can use that is better than these 1105-5500 kVs. And I think you just have to go up to the 1200 series motors. You just aren't going to find anything in the 1100 series that perform like these. So that's my spiel on the motors. If you're a builder, please give these a try. I think you'll be impressed with those. But it does look like you can fly bigger props. You can put two and a half inch props on there if you wanted to. Of course, that's probably going to require retuning. Uh, since I've gotten this Betaflight 4.1 has come out, so that's another opportunity if you wanted to get one of these and you wanted to tinker with the Betaflight tune to try to improve how it flies if you were to be into that sort of thing. You know, if you're really good at tuning or you just like to spend your time tuning, uh, th this would be one to get because uh, I found it fairly challenging on 406 to try to make it any better. Matter of fact, I didn't. So that's kudos to Diatone. At least they put a tune on it that worked very, very well. We oftentimes don't find that with a lot of ready to flies is that you have to tinker with the tune and those that come to the channel know that I'll spend, you know, at least a couple of days, maybe five or six flights each day working on tunes. And oftentimes I'll get a tune that I'm, you know, 60 to 70% comfortable with, maybe a little bit more. And then that's the flight footage that you see. In this particular case, you're seeing the tune as it should come to you, unless they update to for one. Uh, as far as putting the receiver on here, um, they like using this. I'm not a fan of this because it really doesn't do us much good to have two antennas kind of right next to each other. We really need to have one of these antennas coming out back, which you could do. You could wrap a zip tie around here and have it coming out back and then heat shrink the antenna to the zip tie. Uh, I've done that a number of times, but that gives you the 90 degrees. That's a maximum range issue. Of course, with the with the FR Sky XM Plus, you do get very good range. So unless you're doing something longer than, not just what I do, but you know, pretty long range, maybe you're going out more than 300 meters, uh, you may find that you can get a little bit more if you rearrange the antenna placement. Got a high quality VTX in here from TBS. Uh, the flight stack, they, they still do the little rings on here. Hopefully you can make that out. I'm not a fan of all these little rings, only for the purposes that if you ever have to take it apart, you've got to be careful that these little rings don't bounce away from you and then you're out one. Because if you don't have a bin full of these rings, then you're in a little bit of a bad spot because you're going to have to even out, especially your flight controller and if you fly in angle or horizon mode towards doing any sort of self-stabilization. Of course, you can recalibrate, and if your board's not flat, then that will solve that non-flat board issue for you. But uh, I think most of us like to keep our boards pretty symmetrical, so you want even spacing so you don't have anything touching one another. So I'm not a fan of these rings, although I appreciate the fact that it's providing soft mounting, so it's keeping our flight controller from having to fight any vibrations that might be miking their way in there. So that should help improve. Oh, I got a little bit of grass down in there. Also, the flight footage you saw, the yard won't look like that anymore. I don't think I had any flights before we got a snowstorm and a bunch of leaves fell. So uh, winter has arrived, although it warmed up today and I got to fly outside a little bit. It wasn't pleasant, but so a little warning to long time subscribers. The backyard is going to start looking kind of gray. Uh, this canopy and the electroplating, you might remember if you come regularly to the channel. I had a King Kong one that was plastic and it broke. This electroplating must be a form of painting or coating the canopy because I didn't find that in any of my early on crashes when I was flying it that this canopy, it, obviously it didn't suffer any damage. Everything's fine just as it is. Typically when the buzzer that they include, you would want to put that right down in here and you can just plug it in. You can see everything's zip tied in here. I believe the little connector that comes off the ESC harness is, there it is, right, right there. You can just plug the buzzer in there and then it's got a sticky pad built into it. You can squirrel it away right down off the bottom carbon plate. Two last details here before we go. I mentioned it in the quick roll. I double stacked their battery mounting pad and that had to do with how they routed the battery strap. Because this comes under the over the top of the carbon fiber, I like to get my batteries onto these rubber pads rather than, you know, one might have been sufficient, but I thought, you know, they gave us a couple extra so I double stacked them to make sure the battery stays secure. You could re-thread this through there but that's a bit of a pain because the motor wires go underneath the ESC that that space is fairly tight and also I did go ahead and use this little space right here at the back to go ahead and secure my battery lead down. Well I don't think this is for everyone as I mentioned in the flight footage I think it's for those people that like that smooth cinematic sort of flight footage and those that do that 
What do you think of this? What do you think of the components, the footage that you saw, the performance, the flight speed that I tried to show, the length of time? What do you think of this quad? Is it a quad for your quad toolbox? And if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.